Suppose I decided to borrow some money from a good friend, Bertil. <laughs> and even sign a contract where I promise to repay the loan with interest within a month. Would I honor such a contract? Yes, you would. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do in such a situation? The answer might seem obvious. Of course I would repay the loan. But what if I felt I could justify not repaying? For example, if I felt I was more needy than Bertel, or that I felt that the contract was unfair, would I repay then? This is the type of question we addressed in our most recent paper. And in this video, we preview the main findings. So economists are really interested in contracts because contracts are everywhere. You will see them in families, in businesses, among countries, even among good friends. <laughs> so we really need to understand the role of contracts. Contracts are really important because they create the right incentives. And this is obviously so if the contract is what we call enforceable. If we can force people to fulfill or honor the contract, even if the person is not doing so voluntarily. But not all contracts can be enforced like that. I would never take my good friend Alexander to court, even if he didn't pay me back. It would simply be too expensive or costly for me. And this also holds in many other situations. So many of the contracts we see in society are what we call non-enforceable. But these non-enforceable contracts are quite puzzling. Why would anyone care about them? Why would I pay back money if there were no consequences if I did not do so? Economists have two very different views on this. So some economists argue that these contracts are not worth the paper they're written on. People in general, and including Alexander, would only pay me back if they benefited from it themselves. Other economists have, however, argued recently that, well, people may feel a moral duty to respect or honor the contract, even if the contract is non-enforceable. To study this issue, we conducted an experiment with participants in Norway, one of the richest countries in the world, and participants in Tanzania, one of the poorest countries in the world. And the experiment had three stages. In the first stage, the participants could borrow money from other participants. There were two types of contracts, but none of them were enforceable. In the second stage, the borrowers made an uncertain investment and had either a high payoff yes. <laughs> or a low payoff. And in the final stage, the borrowers simply decided how much they wanted to repay the lender. This design allows us to first to address whether or not people are willing to honor non-enforceable contracts, even in a situation where there is no selfish reason for doing so. But more importantly, it allows us to study whether if people feel they can morally justify not repaying a loan if they have been unlucky or if they feel they're more needy than the lender. So our paper offers two main findings. First, we do find that people honor non-enforceable contracts. Like my good friend here, they do pay back the money even if they could avoid this without any further consequences. Second, and maybe even more interesting, we find also that the content of the contract does not matter. What really matters in the situation is the moral argument present. So, when I lend money to Alexander, my good friend, I know that he will pay me back, simply because it's the morally right thing to do. If you like this video, why not check out our other videos? And if that's not enough, follow us on Twitter and Facebook.